Hey guys, how's it going? This is Kate from QPunks, and today we're going to be talking about putting 3D models in a 2D environment. Now, what do I specifically mean by this? So if you look at a game like Sonic Rush here, you'll see that everything in the game environment are 2D sprites, from the rings, to the enemies, to the background, to the tile set. However, Sonic himself is actually a 3D model. There is some stylized shading going on to make him blend more within the 2D elements. However, at the end of the day, the ground is a bunch of pixels, but Sonic himself is some polygons and a couple pixels. Now, aside from the Nintendo DS being portable hardware that could handle 3D and it will wow the player with the technological advancement, what's the other benefit for making a game that does this specific effect? Well, the thing is you run across two specific uh, things that you get with using 3D animation, even within a 2D game environment, that is a greater benefit than trying to do a bunch of sprite sheets. So number one is that once you rig a uh, 3D model, uh, adding new animations to a already existing character, it, it becomes a lot easier. Making new 2D animations to a character requires you to sit down and draw brand new frames for the character. However, making new animations for a 3D character is just setting a bunch of new poses. I've had situations where it's taken me close to a week to make a 3D character for a game, but actually animating them was only really a day's job. And I completed all the animations that were used in the final game within said workday. So, and then the second benefit you also get is that if you have a piece of hardware that can actually handle running 3D, which we're at a point now where that includes everything from budget phones to like the most expensive gaming PC, a general principle or rule of thumb is that if you're able to get the uh, the game and the machine to draw the asset for you, it's going to overall take less file size than having something drawn already and then you importing it and getting it shown on screen. Sure, it doesn't take as much processing power to throw up like a 2D illustration. However, a 2D illustration comparatively to a 3D model will take up a crap ton of file space. And if you want to have a game where uh, characters have detailed and smooth character animations, having those frames drawn already on a big sprite sheet is going to jack up your game's file size. So years ago, I made a pinball game that combines pinball with break the targets called Pinball Breaker. I said pinball a little too much in that sentence, but it stays in the cut. Anyway, the thing is, is that this game, you will see that at the top of the screen, you have a character and the character reacts to the performance of how good you're doing in the game. When you complete a round, they smile, and when you lose a round, they frown. The thing is, having that little character at the top of the screen there, even though it's just like visual novel level illustration, assets, whatever you want to call it, the problem is, is that this game was huge, and that illustration, just one of these things, took up a crap ton of space. Now, there was a sequel that I made, a full remake called Pinball Breaker Deluxe, okay? adds new modes, as well as overhauls the physics engine assets, whatever. You're not here for that. What you are here for, though, is that there are character 3D models in the background, okay? And they are more dynamic and they animate to what you're doing. The thing is, Pinball Breaker Deluxe is a fourth of the file size as the original Pinball Breaker. The original game ate up a crap ton of space. The visual novel still frame illustrations were more than any of the model and texture files that were used for this game. So I'm going to show you what I did when setting up the 3D model in Blender to get said result, as well as also show you the game's project file within the engine I use, Godot. First, we'll go over the 3D models in Blender. And the example we're going to be using is the Leash Child. This is a character from Friday Night Funkin', that I was able to get into Pinball Breaker as a crossover character. Story for another time, all you need to know is the lead programmer, Ninja Muffin 99 is a cool dude. So the 3D model for this little character really looks more like this. However, it gets rendered looking like this. The reason for this is that the shader is just a flat image and it's just wrapping the flat image around the 3D model. When you do it as simple as this, there are literally no light source calculations being done. There are no shadows being drawn. And if you're trying to get a simple cartoon style done, this is really the best method. This is what games like League of Legends actually use for their 3D models. However, they paint on the actual shadows onto the characters. But for this game, the style didn't require for any painted on shadows. And by also doing it this way, I was able to get the colors as just simple swatches that then get projected onto the no larger thing. So if we check the UVs on this guy, uh, the way that the 
polygons wrap to the character, it's just shrunken and just tossed into the square. And if when I wanted to get like the little black outline on the shirt or the inline, sorry, you see at the bottom, there is a black line. This is done because those polygons are just reaching the bottom and are overlapping the black part there. So it draws that inside black line. And if you keep all your UVs as a square, when you do those straight lines, it will always come out as a straight line. Because as you see here on the hat, these lines are actually diagonals. And when you look at the diagonals on the 2D image, these are pixelated. Any of the uh, lines like say on the belt buckle here or on the shirt here, those are straight lines. Basically what you need to know is if it's going to be jagged on the 2D, it's going to be jagged on the 3D. If it's smooth on the 2D, it's smooth on the 3D. That's just how the math works out. And if you do the swatch method right here, you're able to get file size down. I have characters in uh, the Pinball Breaker Deluxe game that they're texture files for their bodies. The faces are a different story. We'll get there in a second. But the body's texture files are literally on parity with the file sizes I've used for pixel art video game sprites. A square is a square regardless of resolution. A straight line is going to be just as straight if it's a big straight or a small straight. The big issue though is like some details, like say the little sunburst effect on his hat here. You just have to make that a 2D image and you have to toss it on like a sticker. And I did just that in this case. So the thing is when you set up your 2D images, save most of your sprite space for the decal, put your swatches in a small corner. And you want to get the character's body being a single texture and a single material within the 3D environment. Because if the game only has to load up one material for multiple polygons, that saves you a crap ton of time on load times. Now the face is an uh, interesting story because really what's going on here is that it's actually a mask that's warped around onto the body here. And the mask is a 2D image. However, it has transparency on it. So because of that, different expressions are able to swap out and he's able to emote differently. Doing it this way, that makes you not have to worry about having a face rig and having it blend in with the rest of the model because all you need to do is just swap out the texture images for the face here. And when you swap out, you know, oh, that, that, that's not a face, but if you swap out the different expressions, they just appear on the character. When setting up the models for this game, what I ended up doing was that I didn't even bother making uh, the facial controls part of the rig. It, was easier for me to just have a custom script set up where I load in all the images ahead of time. I load in the texture file and basically it maps uh, if he's just doing a, a idle animation, make his face normal. And when you do good, make his face happy. And when you do really good, make it the super happy face. Just having that controlled in game rather than say having it controlled within Blender, what I needed to do for my case. Because even if I got say a face animation rig working in Blender, it wasn't going to be able to be imported into the game engine. It would have just been redundant work I had to redo. Which pivots to talking about like how I got the 3D model within the 2D environment. So over here is the general gameplay scene that you see when you play Pinball Breaker Deluxe. You know, the background and the assets are loaded in here because they load in, depending on what characters you play, right when this scene gets instanced. However, the big thing to note is that the paddles, as you see, I I'm a genius and I spelled right wrong, but the paddles here are 2D sprites within the 2D world and the 2D scene. The HUD, 2D. The pause menu, 2D. Everything you see here is 2D. If I switch over to the 3D tab though, nada, nothing. But what ends up happening is that there is a 3D model that gets instanced into here within the character manager viewport. And let's do GLB and we'll do the little leash child again. When, uh, when your character is leash child, it will pull through the files and find leash child dash model dot GLB and instance him here. Okay. So as you see here within the 3D world, you know, this is the 3D environment. It's its own 3D pocket reality. And then there's a, uh, from the camera view within the 3D pocket reality. Let's see if I can get that camera showing. Uh, let's see, it's right over there. From the camera's view, it gets projected onto a 2D texture, which is this character manager thing. So then I can move this 2D texture around within the 3D environment. Now to show a simplified example, this is for the people who are coding within Godot and kind of want to just copy my homework here. This is a 2D environment and this is a 2D sprite. This is a 3D model and a 3D environment. How do I get the 3D model to appear as a 2D sprite? Your viewport node is going to be the pocket reality 
viewport container is going to be the image texture that the 3D model gets projected to. If things aren't projecting correctly, adjust the size on the viewport node. And within the viewport node, you're going to need a camera that has its current flag on because that will control the angle you see the 3D model from. And you need to have a 3D model subject as well. On top of all that, make sure transparent background is toggled on because if not, you know, you get this and yeah, it, the masking effect is incorrect. It's a very simple setup. You just need to know how to stack your Lego blocks correctly. So in review, getting 3D within a 2D environment can save you a lot on file size, as well as also get you more complicated 2D character animation. Setting it up within your game engine is actually more simple than it looks. And same goes for getting the 3D model made. You can also highly optimize the textures and keep a really low poly count if you know the tricks and what to be looking for. Hopefully this video was useful. Hopefully this video was educational. Hopefully this video was insightful. And if not, well, I mean, I mean, I had to make this video. I had to record it. I had to edit it. So if your time was wasted, so is mine. <laughs> Regardless, thank you for watching. Please check out keypunks.com and see some of the games and look at our work, as well as also find our social medias like ugh, Twitter.